yeah, as I said, this bootcam will be on automotive safety, automotive uh, side of machine using ANSA. And for the starters, when I speak about machine, we need to understand where we'll be using this machine, why we need this machine part, and what are the applications we use for FEA. And uh, for uh, CAE, before this uh, technology or the software and hardware are improved, people tend to design things, then make the prototypes, test it, and then they redesign them. Before even we go into designing them, why, we, why do we design any of the systems? And there is a need for all invention, right? So their invention comes with a perspective. Well, let's say we have uh, two wheelers and four wheelers. And let's say a family of uh, five people, if they need to travel on a two wheeler, like a motorcycle or something like that, it's very uh, difficult to work with that. So we went with the public transport, like a bus, but still is that's a common transport. It's not uh, for people who wants to, their privacy. Then uh, comes the train for faster transport, and then the car. So there is a need for all the innovations. And from here, we start with uh, before a product is launched, what are the stages in development? This is just for the introduction part. So they started with the market search, market research. What is the currently people are uh, working with? What are the needs in the market which can sustain? And then it comes to the brainstorming where they have the certain ideas based on the market research. And then comes the concept development, where they have the preliminary uh, design. These are those certain criteria we need to follow. That will be the concept development stage. What is the concept about what we need to do? Then comes the product de development and detailing, where uh, we'll be having the technical specialists. And from the marketing and other departments, they'll be using the ideas from them. And we'll be developing a product based on all the specific ideas. And we make a CAD model in the sense the basic preliminary design design. Once the design is done, we'll be simulating them. Simulation will go in much more detail in the further ca cases. It's more like uh, if we know like a destructive testing where any car which is manufactured, if it needs to come to the, comes into the market, they need to cross, they need to follow certain standards set by the government. So these standards are measured by a testing, district to testing, which is a physical phenomenon where we do it practically. Simulation is something which you do virtual in systems. And then comes the physical test after simulation. Then finally, once the physical test is passed, we will go with the manufacturing area, then the marketing. So that is for the introduction of CAE, why the CAE? And then comes FEA. So in CAE, there are many, many uh, different systems like uh, CFD, NVH, uh, many other applications. And FEA is one of those applications where uh, we'll be using FEA method to work with the CAE, computer aided engineering. And finite element analysis, as I said, uh, it is a method to solve physical model using numerical technique by discretizing model into elements and nodes to get the approximate result. So here we need to just need to go with the idea where we take the physical component and we make this a CAD model in the virtual model and we solve it by numerical method where we discretize the model. So discretize this word, right? So here discretize in the sense we'll be dividing the entire model into small uh, pieces. So why do we do this? Basically, if you we take a physical component in the CAD model, uh, a single surface is made up of large number of lines and the lines are made of infinite number of points. So basically we have infinite number of points. And if you, if you want to define any point in 3D space, and if I need to measure the degrees of freedom for any point, I have six degrees of freedom. So basically it's infinite number of degrees of freedom and even the systems cannot solve them yet. 
so we basically make those infinite into finite degrees of freedom so the process where we uh, reduce that infinite number of degrees of freedom to finite is called discretizing where each and every surface is what we call an element and the vertices of that element is what we call nodes and other than fea are there any other methods to for analyzing any other than fea are there any methods of analyzing so other than fea which is a numerical technique we have two more methods experimental methods where we do the pro build a prototype and do a physical testing like dissect queue testing and then the analytical methods which uh, are from the theoretical part of the engineering where we form differential equations or integral equations for solving the unknowns so in numerical methods we have as i said other than fem we have other methods which consist of finite difference method finite volume method function approximate method of these things we'll be running on finite element method for today's uh, boot camp and ca is significance as we have gone through it before also generating the physical approach of a system at any location which might not be possible in an analytical approach i take a very simple cantilever beam from engineering engineering perspective where we can solve the deflection of the cantilever beam using an analytical approach but i cannot it will be very difficult nearly impossible to do the same thing for a crash analysis like a frontal crash of a car or very complex body and simulation might predict the destructive or impractical load conditions and failure modes the simulation calculation and visual representation of wide variety of physical parameters such as stress or temperature enabling the designer to rapidly analyze the performance and possible modifications so when we do destructive testing we cannot ex exactly visualize majority of the part there so we'll be using simulation to get a better understanding like stresses and temperature so that we can optimize uh, the and optimize and build the modifications and it has low investment when you compare with the physical test or experimental result so as we have gone through these are the other techniques like fea cfd thermal analysis mbd nvh optimization and many others and for applications of cae these are some of the applications in manufacturing industry uh where we have uh, mold flow simulation for casting and forming simulation where we uh, use a punch and die system to form any of the metals and then we have in automotive industry the first is the crash application in the frontal crash where we uh, Uh, we will we tend to analyze how the injury will be on the passenger when a crash occurs so in the in the case of uh, passenger we place some dummy which is also a cad model and meshed component for the analysis and then the frequency response of chassis when, for nvh and then in the aircraft industries for intensive structural analysis of aircraft primary and secondary structures for the margin of safety standards uh, that is regarding the introduction of to fea then we go with machine which is of today's agenda so here we start with idea like what is machine a majority of might be familiar with cad models like creo solid works nx cad where we tend to build a solid models part models so then comes the idea regarding the meshing so what is meshing it's a method of reducing the degrees of freedom from infinite to finite and the process as we discussed discretization yeah uh, so this the bottom you can see there is a car model of accord which is completely meshed model which is a representation of a physical cad system so before i tend to discuss this further go into the mesh type uh, the mesh size as i said when we divide the entire thing into elements and uh, nodes so we need to 
decide on the sizes. So how do we decide on that? Basically, it depends on in three factors. The first factor is of, is it a simpler geometry or a complex geometry? If it is a simpler geometry, we go with something called quad or hexa elements. In a sense, quadrilateral or hexagon, hexa elements. It's like a cuboid or a cube. And then for complex geometry, we go with tria for 2D type and tetra for 3D. Then the second factor will be the analysis type. What type of analysis we are doing? Because certain type of elements or in this case, certain type of shapes are preferable for a certain type of uh, analysis. Here you can see for structural and fatigue analysis, quad elements are preferable. And for casting component analysis, triad elements are preferable. And finally, for crash and nonlinear mixed elements in the sense, the combination of quad and triad. In the first uh, meshing component, we can see it's a kind of mixed structure. And at the bottom of casting component, as I said, we'll be using triad elements and tetra elements. And the third factor will be time to finish. Basically in CAE, time is one of the very important factors. So depending on how much time we have on the simulation, how much of an accuracy, which we need to get into the picture, we'll be deciding what type of elements are to be taken into consideration. For sufficient time and more accurate result, we prefer to go with hexa elements. And for insufficient available time, we go with tetra elements, which will produce a very less, I mean, bit less accurate result. So this is a general condition, but depending on based on type of uh, analysis, type of the complexity of the geometry, these things can be changed. Finally, the significance of mesh. So the mesh, in a sense, we are dividing the infinite into finite. So by doing that, we are reducing our accuracy. So to increase, increase the accuracy and convergence on the speed of simulations, mesh size matters more. And so basically even when we are mesh, when we are meshing it, we are basically dividing the component, but there's a condition that it should resemble the physical component. At the bottom, you can see a car model where even though we meshed it, we taken every, uh, we have removed every surfaces in every volume but still the mesh itself will represent the surface directly. And finally, as a conclusion, we can say a good quality mesh will be giving the more precise result and a poor quality can result in convergence difficulties. So we'll go with convergence in the further slides. So we'll jump into the tool. So this is for the introduction of answer. If you have any questions regarding the introduction part, you can post them in a chat box. I'll be addressing them after the, uh, the first hour. So regarding the answer tool, this is a, uh, here it will be using answer tool for pre-processing for this uh, bootcamp is concerned. Basically, ANSA refers to automatic net generation for structural analysis. It is developed by beta CAE systems. So mainly it will be, this tool is mainly used for automotive industries or to mesh plastic or sheet metal component, which we'll discuss in further details and for structural or CFD analysis mainly. So this tool is used for topology cleanup, meshing, improving mesh, assigning thickness and proper solver deck. So all these things we'll be discussing in further details. So when I'm saying meshing or CAD, or when we discuss CAE, so what are the steps in CAE basically? So this is what we call divided into three steps. One is pre-processing, second is solving, third is post-processing. Of them we'll be doing pre-processing and in pre-processing, these are the steps will be doing and that in ANSA. ANSA is a pre-processor. And in solving is basically like uh, the same example I'll be taking the cantilever beam example where we build a, we have a CAD model. 
and we apply the constraints on one side, we apply the root. That is as far as the pre-processing is concerned. So these are the steps in pre-processing. We'll be having the CAD model. We'll be cleaning it up and we'll be deciding whether it's a plastic or a sheet metal. Then decide to consider mid-surface mid generation or to mesh on the uh, solid geometry itself. And then we have the elemental quality checkup, which we'll discuss in further details. Then the mesh improvement, so that we'll have a very good mesh. Then applying the load and boundary conditions and exporting the input file for solver. So solver is basically a calculator, which you can take a simple analogy, where we input the parameters and it calculates the result. And post-processing is where we tend to analyze what are the results we get how to interpret the result. And this is uh, answer GUI. I can better, I'll show it to you in, in the answer software itself. So this is the model which we'll be using. It's a side door model of an SUV. For the uh, initial part, we have uh, files, and we have these uh, input and output options. We have a large number of uh, solvers where we can get the data from anywhere. You can see it has large number of solvers like Abacus, LS Dyna, Nastron, OptiStack, Radios, ANSYS. From any one of these data, we can import and also output to multiple different solvers. And then we have, uh, uh, we have this deck setup we call it. These are the topo where we'll be using on surfaces to mo modify the surfaces to clean up the surfaces. Then we have the mesh module. These are what we call modules. Then we have the mesh module where we have something called classic mesh, shell mesh, and multiple other areas we'll be using for meshing mainly. And in this session, we'll be using something called classic mesh. Then we have uh, volume mesh. This basically when we decide we tend to need to go with 3D instead of 2D. Then we have something called uh, solver deck where when we need to apply any boundary conditions or any loads that differs from software to software. So we need to make sure that is compatible with the specific software. So we'll be using this solver deck. And finally, we have something called morphing. So if I want to go with the basic idea, morphing is what we usually see in movies where uh, even a small, uh, uh, simple images can be morphed into very different images. Like an example where uh, uh, for to, ma to em emulate dinosaurs, we can go with the idea where uh, cats or dogs and they can be used to frame and they are morphed to a uh, different uh, sizes animals, we can see. So we will go forward. And we have at the bottom, we'll be using these things for capturing, or in the way selection or scoping, I should say. Then we have uh, hiding, or selecting specific components, isolating them. And the middle part will be using them. And the final part will be changing between the wireframe or uh, different types of modes, we call them. Then we have in answer what we call uh, single con, double con and a triple con. Basically the single con are what we call a uh, free edges. In the sense the surface is free, they are not connected to any other. And the double con where we call it's a shared edge, where we connect two different surfaces and the intersection of that will be shown as a double con. Finally, we have a triple con where intersection between three surfaces will be seen as a triple con. So when I said we'll be discussing on what's a sheet metal and a plastic. So in CAE or basically we define sheet metal as something where the thickness is uniform throughout. So any model which has a thickness of the whole component uniform throughout, even though it varying very, very minutely, they are what we call sheet metals. 
generally this definition taken uh, because the way we approach if it is a sheet metal or a plastic the way we approach for towards meshing will be changed continuously and so basically here the meshing uniform thickness should be there at the same time there is one more constraint we need, we need to follow the thickness should be less than 6 mm if the thickness is less than 6 mm we tend to go for 2d meshing in the sense we'll be extracting a mid surface if it is more than 6 mm we go with 3d meshing there we don't extract any mid surface then we have plastic model where we uh, the simple definition will be the things which are not sheet metal where the thickness is varying throughout the component like for an example of uh, bottle cap where we have uh, different thickness at different intervals where we have so these are what we call what we are defining as plastics here the same thing if the thickness is less than 6 mm we tend to extract the mid surface and go with 2d meshing and if the thickness is more than 6 mm we tend to prefer 3d meshing after defining each everything as a closed volume and an ansa as i said will be go, some doing something called topology cleanup so basically this is a pre processor and says a pre processor which is a different than any cats office so when we import any igs or step file into the ansa software there tend to be many uh, surface errors where we can see even though the surface are connected we are still seeing the mass uh, red lines so we need to rectify them so that's what we here it is called topology cleanup where uh, geometry consisting of surface or lines combines together and they form the cad model and this topology cleanup is just fixing the cad model making it ready for the meshing process and why we need to go for 2d instead of 3d so there's a basic idea like there are basic criteria when we need to follow why 2d over 3d basically when we do a meshing and yeah here we will go with the step by step process so this is preferred and we have gone through and one more thing we need to consider is that shape should not be complex when we go in with a 2d meshing then the main idea regarding a thing uh, when we do meshing like with the 2d we we can take a mid surface and we when we mesh them the number of nodes let's say the number of nodes are 100 then the same thing if we do if i do the 3d meshing for a thickness less than 6 mm the number of nodes will be doubled uh, since we can say on a quadrilateral uh, we have uh, four four corners similarly if we take a cube or a cuboid we have eight corners so the number of nodes are increased at the same time number of degrees of freedom are increased so the computation time will be further increased then similarly uh, it is observed with the statistics itself due to the less number of elements for 2d meshing it is 25% faster than the time taken for 3d elements there is one of the studies which where we compared for a simple cantilever beam if i am going with a mid surfacing and creating 250 elements will be created and 500 elements for 3d keep it, and mind that here the element size is same with the same element size and the deformation is not varying too much whether i am going with 2d or 3d and one more thing as i said we need to keep in mind it should not be too complex so that the results will be varying if we go with 3d since that is how the cad model is defined then but the ultimately you can see the time taken for uh, uh, complete completion of the analysis and in cae time is the one of the very important factors so uh, from these uh, statistic and results we can see we go a 2d meshing for simpler geometries and with a thickness less than 6 mm
so before uh, we'll be following the step by step process in ansa we have the cad model then we need to jump a topology cleanup then we go with mid surfacing depending on whether it's a sheet metal or a plastic whether sheet 2d meshing should be done and uh, only if 2d meshing is to be done will be going will be extracting a mid surface these are the techniques we'll be using for mid surfacing where one is of manual method there is an automatic method which uses the algorithms to generate the mid surface and in manual method we have uh, offset and middle in automatic surface we have something called skin and casting or casting so since uh, this boot camp is mainly on meshing of automatic side door panel which is a 2d sheet metal component and the thickness is less than 6 mm i'll be focusing more on 2d modeling part of here so basically uh, we'll be introducing the geometry performing the topology cleanup and since rectifying any geometrical errors and the second part where we'll be extracting the mid surface and introducing the quality criteria and will be meshing once it has a proper mesh flow and meshing is properly done we go with the third part where thickness will be assigned so that my mesh will be representing my cad model so you can see this is one of the example where mid surface is extract extracted so where we can see this single cones or free edges or a red lines from the uh, 3d model once the, that is done we'll be using the quality criteria and meshing so mesh will be uh, seen something similar to here which we can see then once that is done mesh flow will be corrected then the thickness will be assigned where my parent geometry on my left side that is being represented as my meshed model on my on this right side then we go with the mesh elements so till now i am speaking with uh, meshing discretizing and we have set a number of elements so why not why only quad or tria why not any any other elements so there is a specific reason why we tend to prefer only these elements so these are the types of elements we'll be using in ansa where for 1d elements or line elements where for components like a beam where one with the three dimensions where one dimension is far greater than compared to any other two dimensions we'll be using something called rod bar or beam elements this for initial where we won't be using many of them today then we have 2d elements we are we call them shell elements also where we'll be using quads and trias and in 3d elements or we, or we call as solid elements we have tetra or hexa elements and finally we have something called special elements these are used to represent something like uh, let's take an example of a bolt or springs where we cannot exactly model them in ce because their uh, dimensions are very very different compared you to let's say my sheet metal which dimensions are far larger so instead of meshing them we tend to represent them using this special elements where what does the function of a spring when you uh, apply some force on the spring when you remove it it should release the force or the energy stored in the spring so the functioning is being represented in a different format using this special elements finally that is uh, the initial part where the mid surfacing is taken care then till now we are discussing about meshing and each and every element when we are defining them ideal shape will be a square where each side we have a same uh, length or the units units and we have rectangle we have quadrilateral we have rhombus if i take a small a quadrilateral shape but how do i define which type of element i should go what are the criterias because we have just defined element size 
but there are certain uh, certain number of things which we need to consider those will be based on this something called quality criteria or quality check so these are the parameters will be designing based on whether the mesh is good or bad when i said mesh is good where we need to improve the mesh one of uh, so some of the things are of this warp angle skewness aspect ratio minimum length maximum length quad or triangles so we'll be discussing them one by one so these are just based on the geometry of the systems so aspect ratio when i say aspect ratio they are being defined with a ratio of maximum length to the minimum length where we can see the first is an ideal element it's like a square where if we take an aspect ratio it will be one and if i'm defining my aspect ratio to be one the second element will be my failed element we call it where we need to improve my second element to the first element within the provided considerations and we can see in the second element the aspect ratio in the sense maximum length which is of 2 divided by my minimal length which is of 0 0.5 so finally my aspect ratio will be 4 which is far greater than 1 so this type of element should be removed one of the reasons why we are going with aspect ratio why the specific quality criteria is to go with idea of strain let's say i have a simple rectangle where my maximum length one side of length will be four my breadth will be one even that case my aspect ratio will be four but if i go with something called a strain for this one by one element in the same one by four rectangle i have four elements so strain for each and everything if i calculate 0.1% if it is moved by 0.1 my strain is 0.1 but for four elements if i'm taking it as a same strain i have a total strain of 0.4 but if i go with my rectangle and if i have the same strain as 0.4 and divided by 5 so the strain value where we can see the accuracy is uh, very very less so this is one of the important ratio, uh, aspect ratio where if if we need to define to get a proper accurate result then we have the skewness skewness will be defined by using the bisections for a quad even for uh, for trias it's a bit slightly different but the basic idea is to make the bisections from the sides and measure the angles between them and the least angle will be subtracted from 90 degrees and that will be the skewness so for an ideal element like a square or rectangle we have uh, 90 degrees as my minimum and so the skewness ideal skewness will be zero and any distorted element we have a different skewness value and the reason for defining the skewness where if the deformation is even uh, slightly there it's a strain value or shear strain if it is small for even for smaller value of distorted element your strain your element will be deformed too much and then the shape will be uh, very different than when i compare with my ideal element And as I said, for skewness of trial, it's slightly different where we have a bisection from side to side and we have bisection from one of the corner to its opposite uh, length. Similarly, we'll be measuring the angles. Here, we'll be taking the skewness for all the three sides and measuring the minimum skewness. Then we come to something called warpage. Basically, when we compare uh, a quadrilateral and a tria, a tria has only three corners on for a linear element. Linear uh, represents it's like a straight line. If I take a tria and I have only three points, and for any plane to represent, we need three points. So tria can only be only in one plane. 
but if we go with quad element we can divide the entire thing into two triads so two the, the same quad can be in two different planes so warpage is something the angle between two different planes so for an ideal element the warp angle will be zero yes zero but if there is a small slight deviation like how you can see in the in this image the warp edge will be measured and similarly this is also uh, the aspect of strains uh, this warp edge is also considered for more accurate results then we have jacobin well jacobin is uh, in real in if you go with here the system itself it just represent how my element after deformation or better uh, the idea behind this is to if you if we take any component and when we mesh the component we'll be measuring the uh, or the nodes with respect to the global coordinate system so the coordinates of my any element will be changing continuously throughout my component so to mitigate that to reduce our computation power we shifted from global to natural coordinate system where we have a distorted element where we have an ideal element once we are converting from global to local how the how the distorted element is deviating from my ideal element that is given by jacobin and this is one of the very important aspect uh, quality check we need to perform before we proceed any further and in uh, other than jacobian we have minimum length and the maximum length as uh, same as we have discussed before minimum length and maximum length we have it is defined by my element size directly so uh, that's it for uh, the introduction part and similarly simple things will be i'll be talking about the softwares before we jump into the my first qa q and a then we'll be going with the software demo uh, for the basics where ansa is considered it's a pre processor along with something called hypermesh that's also a pre processor where we do geometric cleanup and the meshing and apply the boundary conditions and there are certain solvers like ansys abacus uh, radios ls dyna where we get uh, take this mesh and the boundary conditions and we solve them using the softwares as as i mentioned and finally we have post processing where we get the results from my solver either from ls dyna ansys or uh, radios then we analyze what is the relation between my input in the sense the loads and my outputs how they are affecting my mesh size and depending on my result and how it is validating with the reality so depending on that we'll be either changing the mesh size mesh flow so that i'll get a more accurate result so that i can compare the results between my simulation and in and the reality and finally uh, as i said we have uh, here the faces using this topo will be working on the mid surfacing and using this mesh will be working on the meshing of this geometry we'll be going in much more detail from here on and yeah if you have any questions i'll be answering them now i'll be going taking the questions from chat if you have any more questions you can just raise your hand i'll unmute you can even speak then so i'll start with uh sorry guys since everyone should be comfortable i'll be using english here itself and recording a uh, ppt will not be available so if you have any questions you can just ask ask me directly here itself
So the graphics part, I'll be showing the demo directly. And finally, I'll be showing a video where we'll be using the meshing completely. Like why we, when we have gone through the basic regarding why meshing is done, but I'll show you a visual where we'll be using the meshing completely and in analysis, a small video clip will be there. So one more question, why size of the meshing matters? So basically, as I said, uh, we are trying to reduce my infinite degrees of freedom to finite degrees of freedom. So if I have infinite, let's say a simple a physical phenomenon, when you apply a load, you'll get a certain deflection. But the thing, it has infinite number of points. We are trying to reduce the number of points to a limit size so that my system can solve it. That is the reason if you have a higher mesh size, the results will be much not accurate. So accuracy is one of the important things. So because if you do simulation, you get the result. And if the result is not matching with the reality, then the, all the things which you have done is a waste of time. So I have a next question. So I hope uh, my, this answers my question, Chandan. What is a closed volume? So if I, if I have a simple cube where all the surfaces are covered from all the sides, it's a closed volume. And if I have a bottle where a cap is removed, one side, it's an open, open part. So that's what it's not a closed volume. And sorry guys, model will not be there. You can try get it, get uh, some of the models from uh, online. Yeah, Chandan, I hope uh, this answers your questions. So Topo will be discussing when I'm showing you the software demo. Sai, you can unmute. Hello, Sai, you can unmute and uh, you can ask any the, any questions you have. Uh, yeah, sorry. Sir, sir, how is this software different from the other software? Sir? Even ANSYS software can do the analysis. Yes, but yeah, I'll I'll show you the difference. But you have used ANSYS, so you might be familiar like how it does the meshing, how the mesh looks like, right? Mm, so yes, when sir. we are following this, you'll understand. You can ask a similar question after the second hour. If you, if you need much more clarity uh, on this, I'll answer. Uh, so can you please uh, elaborate at CA what is name and CA? CA computer aided engineering. Basically, oh, okay. when we do a simple cantilever beam, the same I'm taking the same example. When we take the simple cantilever beam, we tend to analyze the slope or deflection. The same thing which we are doing using the systems. That's what we do in CA. Oh, okay. But that's a very simple example. I hope this answers your question, Sai. Okay. And how ANSA is different from SOLIDWORKS? Yeah, this point, Shankar, after the second hour, if you still need much more clarity on this, we'll discuss more. How do you decide element size? So basically, uh, we take a element size based on my, my the whole component, the size of the component, we simulate it for a very basic conditions. We'll get the result and we read, we change the mesh size. We do the similar thing. And when we compare the result, we'll understand how the results are differing when I, when I'm changing the mesh. So it's like a relation between my mesh size and the result. So there will come a point where even though I'm reducing my mesh size, my results are not changing. That is the point where We decide that we uh, decide on the mesh size. Yeah, 
Uh, Santosh, it is very easy to understand even for beginners. But at the start, it will be difficult because there's a new area where we need to explore. But once we get used to the techniques we'll be using, uh, this will be, yeah, this will be easier then. No, uh, Kumar, ANSA is not similar to ANSYS. In ANSYS, we can do all the things from building a CAD model to meshing, to analysis and post-processing all the things. But they have their own, uh, in, uh, in ANSYS where we cannot, mainly for meshing, ANSA is mainly used for meshing. Here we don't do any analysis. So why are auto automobile companies are using answer that uh, when we are, when I complete the software demo, this point will be more clear to you, Kumar. No, for CFD, it's almost similar, but there are certain things which we consider differently because they work in the idea behind CFD and FEA is a bit slightly different. That differs with uh, FEA or in the sense finite difference method. In CFD, we use finite difference method. In CA or FEA, we use FEM, finite element method. So based on that, my quality, machine criteria will be changing, but they are almost similar. Yes, Chandan, rectangular machine will have a bit best result. Can we do solidification simulation? Sorry guys, again, this is a, just a pre-processor. ANSA is just a pre-processor. We, we don't do any simulations in the software. This is mainly for meshing. And we'll be using solvers where we import the mesh which we generate in ANSA for uh, any simulations. Even we can do solidification simulations. So uh, this point is clear. How do you decide the element size? We do something called a grid dependency test. You can check it out that point where we uh, tend to analyze the relation between my mesh size and the result and beyond a certain point where the results are not changing even though I'm refining my mesh size there we uh, tend to take that size as my uh, for my analysis if it's not a closed volume we need to close the volume let's say it changes if you take a bottle and if you open a cap, it becomes a 2D because it's a hollow. It will become a sheet metal or a plastic. Because either you have a surface, in the sense uh, your thickness wise, you can understand. If it's not a closed volume, you need to make sure that's a hollow or uh, solid. Basically, I think this, this point I'll clear you, Chandan, when I'm taking you through the, through the demo. Uh, guys, I'll unmute you one by one. Just uh, let me answer these questions. Yes, uh, Shankar, we can do all the time work in ANS is fluent itself. But again, as I'm saying, uh, meshing where we uh, control how the mesh flow will be and the mesh flow will decide how accurate result will be. Yeah, when I said 1D elements, or special elements, Karthik, when I'm discussing that, uh, we'll be connecting different, different uh, parts in assembly using those specific special elements and 1D elements. Yes, we can do casting solidification. Say again, the simula it's not a simulation software. We can only do meshing here. It's not like 2D meshing is easier, easier than 3D mesh. It depends on in which component we are concentrating on. And yeah, uh, number of nodes in 2D will be far lesser than 3D, so it's easy to work with 2D. Uh, Opens is not considered, but you can check it out the skilling page where we have some of the free courses for uh, FIA and CFD. No guys, Hypermesh and Answer, they have their own uh, capabilities like uh, we have Creo, uh, Catia, SolidWorks. Even though different, different CAD softwares are there, each has its own speciality. Similarly, the usage, the user interface, whether uh, some people are prefer Answer, like they can work 
more better in answer some people prefer hypermesh so there is nothing specific regarding which software is the best uh, no guys answer cannot be used for uh, post processing it's just a, a pre processing tool where we just need to mesh it apply the boundary conditions and export the file which will be used for solving like answer ansys ls dyna or uh, similar kind of softwares So other than meshing, yeah, meshing is the main important thing. We can assign the materials, we can assign the thickness, we can connect different different parts. But you need to understand, without doing a very proper mesh, the result you will be getting in CAE will be will not be any use, will not be of any use. So meshing is very very important, and there are uh, many many companies who are hiring for meshing engineers, even though the automation is there. that will not be very good in guys uh, chandra uh, chandra ansa is a pre process software it's not an anal analysis software adjacent two line points identical so shankar can you please uh, elaborate on this thing yes chandan ansa is just a meshing software nikhil i'm not sure your uh, i cannot can you try unmuting and uh, speaking up nikhil okay fine akash can you unmute unmute yes sir yes akash sir my question is which software is better for meshing hypermesh or nsa it depends on your usage how better you feel about ansa or hypermesh no, so some people both software are newly for me so you can start and... with, you can start with ansa or you can start with hypermesh okay sir either, either one is fine okay, thank you sir okay akash abiram abiram you can unmute Okay, fine. So Shankar, uh, the errors we'll be discussing when we go with machine. Ankit, Ankit, you can unmute and speak. Kumar. Hi sir. Yeah, Kumar. Uh, Kumar. Uh, sir, my question is, uh, uh, is it regarding the ANSYS and uh, ANSYS differentiation? Sir, in ANSYS also there is a space climb uh, tool like uh, you can able to create a CAD model or some space space climb. So, how much difference is there between ANSYS and ANSYS? You have used ANSYS, right? ANSYS, ANSYS. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I'm learning ANSYS. fine uh, when when i'm showing the software demo you'll understand bit on this and after uh, okay, the software demo is done if you still have any queries i'll i'll explain uh, uh, and uh, one more query sir uh, can you give us a broad Im uh, broad image about this simulation software like uh, hypermesh and uh, and this and the uh, ls dyna so uh, see uh, after completion of this pre processing in answer we'll uh, what transfer this uh, cad model to ansys or what for solving i did yes, understand yes that yes thing. yes once we do meshing okay. we assign the thickness mm -hmm. apply the boundary conditions once everything is done we export this model for the solver each solver has its own specific uh, parameters like let's say i'm uh, saying load in one solver it can be treated as a force in different different solver so yes, the naming will be different so we just hmm. need to define the boundary conditions and those things specific specifically for specific solvers that's a very important thing we need to do and yeah we need to export that and that file will be used for solvers for solving no okay fine thank you this clear right kumar yes sir so clear okay, thank you, you. not only manufacturing software abram any other uh, sectors they'll be using this meshing if you want to analyze anything 
we'll be doing via meshing itself in fea using fea we'll be doing that without doing this computers cannot solve them that is the reason we are using the meshing technique if you take 1 mm and 1 mm a uh, sheet uh, as i said there is nothing to specify on them but if you are taking 1 mm uh, by 1 mm sheet it'll be starting with the uh, 1/10 of the this mesh size like 0.1 mm then we'll be checking the result doing a very simple simulation we need to check the result by changing the mesh size and we'll be stopping the point where mesh uh, my mesh size will not be influencing my result wow well, one of the reason is meshing deshmukh one of the reason is meshing if meshing is not proper your convergence problem will also occur and the other conditions will be one of some of them will be on boundary conditions and some of them will be on controls again prakash uh, there is you can use you can follow any one of them ansa or hypermesh either will be fine no uh, the software is not similar to autocad autocad creo catia solid work that those are all just cad softwares where we can make a, a part models this is what comes after the cad okay guys i suppose you don't have any other questions we'll jump into the next phase of today's session and similarly if you have any more questions here you can just uh, post it in the chat box so for this software demo i'll be using uh, this side door of an suv and how to import this we'll start with th that point i will be using the file open options for these are the uh, top uh, i should how should i say so these are the formats which will be supported by ansa some of the contains igs step catia a uh, cat parts and parasolid unigraphics cards and creo these are the cat models where you can save it these all the models ansa which can ansa can read them solidx parts inventor and acis rhinosaurus jt any one of these uh, things will be using so for today's say boot camp i'll be using step file i just need to open it since we will be starting with the cad model and at the bottom we will be seeing the percentages how much percentage how fast uh, they are being loaded yes and other than this uh, we have we can also import the solver dex or we call them meshing let's say we have some mesh and we are uh, following as i said right to decide the mesh size we use let's say ls dyna or ansys or better since ansys has its can do meshing there we'll go with ls dyna for an example where we used let's say mesh size of 1 mm we found the result if i need to remesh them i need to come back here so i'll be using solver deck i can import it directly in solver deck change the mesh add anything in the for the pre processing and again export them for the ls dyna and we'll be using that for solving yeah you can use the backers also and you can output cad Uh, similarly like step or igs and these are the things which you call connections where we connect different different parts of the assembly that also i'll be uh, taking you through a brief example so before we go any further i have multiple parts in this sheet, this uh, side door some of them you, you can recognize this a hinge models i have uh, outer panel and here you can see these are the part will be changing between part and mid surfaces parts for recognizing the differences between different different parts 
so we can see in outer panel and inner panel and hinges bolt some of the other parts here we can see directly all of them and yeah one of the questions some of them were asked right like uh, this like this one if you see this component i'll just isolate that and for isolating we'll be using the bottom this bar and yeah so enabling the names and everything will be using this show labels option and you can use the uh, size of the icons also this panel we'll be using not i not options to hide and unhide the geometries and for scoping or to select the uh, options we'll be using this thing since uh, i have a different parts i i'll be using this something called pid this uh, refers to property id i can just select this better i see the difference between not and i not is uh, just the opposite if i use i not select it and once i confirm for confirmation the option will be middle click or enter either will be suffice mouse middle click or enter and for the controls will be using for rotation will be using control plus left click of the mouse and dragging it for rotation and the center of rotation will be change where your mouse will be and for panning or in sense moving will be using control plus middle click and dragging it this is for panning out and scroll button will be used for zooming and zooming in zooming out and for selection once again i'll repeat or you can just check them in tools and settings the settings we can change them as per the convenience here so this will be in tools and settings and here we can change it uh, how the controls will be changed your sensitivity everything will be changed here once again i'll repeat for rotation it will be control and left click using that we can rotate it for zooming and uh, zooming in in and out we'll be using scroll button and for panning we'll be using control plus middle click and drag now we need to understand one of the questions regarding if it's a not a closed volume so we can see it's uh, from this we can see it's a closed volume every surface is completely closed so let's say i'm hiding some of the surfaces and if you want to select individual surfaces or lines we need to select entity select it here you can see it's not now it's not a closed volume but the thing you need to understand this is solid this is not a sheet metal this is the thickness wise it has it is of more than 6 mm these kind of things we cannot mesh them either it should be a closed volume or it should be a sheet metal if it's not a closed volume we need to make sure it closes it should be a complete body and for uh, measurement the options will be at the top here using this we can measure the distances between nodes or here we the lines are what we call cons let's say i'm measuring between this node and the opposite node it will show the diameter so the diameter of 1 5 mm and to this is like a just a pin right so we don't mesh these things it depends on the criteria whether we need this component or not so some of the conditions where we don't mesh them we'll be using something called connective like 1d or special elements to depict the same thing we'll discuss them the, them on much more detail manner using the store option we can add the measurements so that we don't need to measure each and every time just need to enable and disable to understand what is the thickness now we need to, uh, now i think this is the part with the usage of the tools controls now i'll be just isolating one of the parts to understand 
it's a sheet metal on or or is it a plastic and these all if you click on all everything anything you are hidden everything will be shown what once and this one will be using for invert in the sense the visibility visible parts will be hidden and the invisible or hidden parts will be visible and using this lock option we can lock this view so even if i click on all not all of them will be enabled so that i can work on only this component i can hide any part of here or if i click on all only the specific view will be generated due to this lock option and neighbor here if let's say if i am hidden unhide uh, one part if i need to generate all the surfaces which are connected to this i'll using this neighbor or all option one level will generate only one level of the surfaces all will be generating all of the component only one component here since this is of a different part now to identify whether this is a sheet metal or a plastic as we discussed sheet metal is something where thickness is uniform throughout the component and the thickness is should be less than 6 mm so we'll be using these nodes to using the measure option will be trying to understand what is the thickness and since this is in a solid mode or in the sense uh, a shadow mode we can see it's opaque now if i want to measure between this and the opposite surface we'll be using something called control plus shift or shift and we can we can enable the shadow mode so that we can measure the differences between them to enable the shadow mode you need to go with entity in the entity itself here the entity will be shown in the surfaces where you can see it has two colors yellow and uh, gray so these represents the normals of the surfaces which direction they are facing so normal should always be uniform if they are not uniform we'll be using this orient option under topo module faces orient so normals will be changed oppositely this is will be in the entity mode this is also one of the important criteria which we need to understand when we are going to solve solving all the elements all the surfaces should fall, should be in the same uh, normal should be in same direction and we'll be using this and you can use control plus shift so that wireframe mode will be enabled control plus shift and we can see i have uh, thickness of 0.75 at this position which is less than 6 mm but i'll be measuring some more some more areas to confirm what is the thickness here also is 0.75 and some more areas here i'll be using that for rotation control plus left click and drag and you can use between point and align yes here it is one of the components select here also it's 0.75 so we just need to measure some 3 to 4 different different areas to confirm this is a sheet metal since the uniform thickness is uniform throughout the component we can uh, be sure to specify this as sheet metal and I'll, i can hide the thicknesses now since we confirm with the sheet metal 
the next process will be on 2D. Since uh, the, this is a sheet metal and thickness is less than 6 mm, I'll be creating a mid surface. Before I do create a mid surface, I need to check if there are any geometrical errors. And this geometrical error check will be done for each and every part separately. And if you need to know how, what are the parts that are present, there is something called properties will be here. And if the properties are not there, if you want to divide those certain parts separately, we'll be using this set PID option. Just double click on the property. All the properties that are uh, present with the model will be shown. You just need to click on the bulbs here to hide them and unhide them. And if uh, let's say if I want to create a separate part, just need to set up, click on set PID and uh, select the part and confirm it by middle click, mouse middle click or enter. Here I just need to specify a new, new shell and assign them. Just double click on that, that will be assigned. And since I'll be only using one of the parts for the demonstration, I'll be using this outer panel. And this, as I said, checks will be done individually for each and every part. So that they won't be combined as uh, one, all, all as one. That is done through this checks panel checks geometry using that we can measure what are any there are any geometrical errors here i'll be adding the single cons if there are any free edges because this is of a closed component sheet metal there should not be any free edges once that that is done we just need to choose of the of these options that are visible so that geometrical check won't be done for the entire components only for one component and execute so I have uh, around 53 geometrical errors. I need to fix all these errors before I go any further. This is this process is what we call topology cleanup. And some of the errors can be automatically fixed by the software using the algorithms. For that, you just need to click here and uh, fix. So majority of the errors will be fixed automatically. Along with that, you can manually work on them. Uh, I'll take a different component so that I can demonstrate if there are uh, how to work on manually for if there are any geometrical errors, which cannot be rectified using the auto. Again, I'm showing how to check the geometry cleanup using this checks geometry. And visible, execute on visible execute. So let's say these unchecked phases are there. I just need to fix them. There are one is being fixed. The other is not being fixed. I'll try again. So it was not fixed automatically. So I just need to identify where this option is. So here you can see if I don't select any of them, if I select any one of them, it will be highlighted. If you zoom out, it will be better. If I change the position, the position will be highlighted. This is one of the way to check where the geometrical error is. The other option will be right click on this show only option. And you can click on F9 for zoom fit option. This is one of the errors which are not automatically taken care. So here we can see. If you zoom it and use control Z, whatever the hidden will be automatically unhided. So this is one of the errors which we need to work on it manually. And here also we have one more option. You can just confirm it once again. So to work on phases, see these are all surfaces, we'll be using majority here itself, phases. I'll be using delete option so that the surface which is there, which I am not able to see it properly and the surface is not proper again. 
I just need to delete the surface. And one more here. And now I have free edges. And these are the points, what we call hot points. Whatever the points in ANSA, we call them as hot points. We can remove any of the hot points which will interfere with the creation of a surface, proper surface here. Once that is done, we can just go with the new option, phases new. Here, using this new, we can create any surface. It's like how we work with CAD geometry, but it's slightly different how, than how we do it. We can just select the surfaces, but make sure we are selecting all the free edges properly. Zoom in and zoom out will be working better. Once this is done, select it, and you just need to confirm it. And I have multiple options here. Coons, fitted, planar, existing surfaces. Depending on the area, will be shifting between uh, position to position. So coons will be only be used in a plane geometry. In the sense, they should be on the same plane. There should not be any devi deviations. And similarly, planar. If you are not sure how the geometry will be, we can use the fitted option. Using this, we can we have an option, so multiple options will be given. Select them to check how the surface is. This is much better than the previous surface. This is how some of the uh, you know geometrical errors should be taken care. And there are some of the errors where geometry is not even properly written by the answer software. We need to work manually on these things. Delete properly so that when I'm creating it won't I don't have any uh, problematic areas similarly you just need to delete them but deletion should be done appropriately so that when you're creating a surface it should be easy for us to work on. So once that is done, I just need to go select all of them. Select all the edges. So that my surface will be created proper surface. Confirmation is done. So as a proper surface is created. Similarly, we need to work on the geometric errors which are not fixed automatically. Once geometric errors are taken care, taken into uh, taken care. We just need to work on the mid surfacing, creation of mid surface. So as I said, there are multiple ways to create a mid surface. One is auto automatic method. There is a manual method also. Before we go any further, there is one more thing we need to take in consideration. So even though this area which should be a proper circle. We cannot see, we can see the edges. This is due to the geometric resolution because answer works with these points. Always the points will be created. So we need to, we can use the fine option in the auxiliaries to check what is the basic geometry of this. So here we can see they are of proper circles, but doing this will increase Doing this will increase the number of points on this because the larger number of points, the better the circle will be. The idea behind that. So mid surface, you can do auto and manual. Automatic will be using the skin option. Using the skin option and how to select this will be left click and hold it so that we'll get the options. 
just hover over them selecting then selecting selection via left click and drag selection is done and confirm it so that it will show in three colors red will be shown in one side of the surface the other side will be green and the middle any of the surface will be in blue color so this blue color will be completely differentiating between red and green once it is done just need to confirm it twice you need to select the offside surface now now will be shown as the arrow mark depending on the arrow mark we need to check if this is the surface and the mid surface should be created between these two surfaces and if the arrow mark is towards the surface in the sense from uh, the surface which we selected to the opposite the positive value should be given and if you confirm it a mid surface will be created automatically now we can see it's it has a free edges so this is what we call a mid surface and when you are creating a mid surface with automatic option like the skin option there is a there are options here at the bottom there are options whether to create or delete an original faces or not we tend to keep them the the, um, the mass no but for the demonstration purpose or better will be changing the option here i'll not be deleting the original surfaces and the skin part will be created a new property id and similarly select the skin the geometry confirm it confirm select the skin offset accept the option once that is done you can see this mid surface here we have a parent geometry we have a mid surface similarly you can use the not option to click on it and select the geometry so that all the things which are connected to this parent geometry are hidden now we can see the mid surface this is one of the methods where we can verify them the other way of verification is in the properties i have two properties you can see the bulb options are uh, enabled for two of them just need to click on and we can see the thickness the automatic way of assigning uh, you know mid surfacing will create a thickness property automatically where thickness is automatically given we just need to right click on here and transparency if you switch on the transparency the part will be transparent we need to make sure it's transparent once if this doesn't work we can go to property tab completely and here we can switch on the transparency complete for all of them select the transparency on apply so this transparency only works with pid not the entity now we can see if this is a mid surface properly or not and we need we need to make sure it has a different color and color changing can be done directly from here double click on that we can shift to any color like like a red and if you select them so it it the it will be changed completely now we can see whether the property we created and the mid surface is proper once we confirm the mid surface is proper then we will be going with the next part which is meshing so whenever we are meshing we need to make sure they are in entity ids so color wise it's very easy to use this is the automatic mid surface 
the manual mid surface options will be using offset faces like when we select any surface this is also in cad model which might have seen select the surface confirm it and just we need to select at uh, for how much distance the offset be created this is a manual way of working it and there are multiple other options using curves faces cons here represents the lines as i said let's say as i specified this yellow line represents two surfaces are being connected this release option will just separate both of them where we can see using the red line both are separated so these are the option will be used when we are working on triple cone errors i hope this is clear how to work on mid surfacing this is only one or two options i am using it and depending on the type of component i'll be working on these specific things will be changed once this is done i need to set the quality criteria after the mid surfacing is done and we need to make sure we have do we have done checks for the mid surfacing also topology cleanup even for mid surfacing similarly geometry but here you will be unchecking the single cones because the mid surfacing the single cones are very much differentiable we can see the single cones it should be there so we cannot treat them as geometric layers for mid surfacing once we done that i'll go with execute option if there are any errors it will show and you can just directly fix them then we can go with the meshing part and to set the quality criteria we have options here quality and mesh i can go with quality criteria and uh, as as we have discussed in my presentation these are some of the quality criteria we have aspect ratio skewness warping minimum size maximum length quad ang angles so some of the options will be using not majority of them so any automotive industry has its own uh, criteria files their own standards they'll be following so we can even save the quality criteria and open them so i have uh, some of the quality criteria i'll be using now let's say i'm going with this quality criteria so this quality criteria i'm going with the minimum size of 1 and maximum length of 5 so these are not fixed actually in the sense we will be knowing all the other quality criterias before we do meshing but to decide on minimum size that will be based on my grid dependency test once you fix the quality criteria apply then if you we need to when we are meshing we need a way to specify like the the element is failing if the element is not proper so that will be going for classic mesh and here at the bottom will be uh, taking to hidden view by doing that i'll be in the mesh mode this is what you call mesh mode i'll have the quality criteria here here the number of unmeshed surfaces will be there so that we can keep a track of all of them and uh, here we can hide all the quality criteria which are all inactive and we can even edit them i'll be hiding all the inactive criteria sorry hide all the inactive criteria so only the active criteria will be shown so as i said in answer we do refine we do finement here when we do that this number of hot points or what will be increased where we have it done right one area where we worked on let's see this area i'll go with this area we can go use the find find option here so that i have much more finer mesh but if i go with mesh option i can see number of points have increased directly here so these number of points when we are meshing will create a problem i will show it small demonstration so that you understand and there these are not the only options which are available 
if you right click on any one of these options here, let's say for mesh generation, there are some additional options here. If you want to add them from the hidden part to the main part, just need to right click on them. So similarly, if you right click on any one of them, they'll be changed to hidden. Right click. Now I'll be using best algorithm. These are machine algorithms, which we can use any one of them. I'll be using this one. Once I select some any, these are what you call macros. Like what surface? A surface between boundaries is what we call macro in ANSA. At the bottom, we can see. Once we mesh it. So even when you're meshing it, I never specified any of the element sizes. So these points will define my element size directly in ANSA. So that is the reason before we continue any further in meshing. In ANSA, we do one more, one more part, then we go with meshing. It's called length, where we define every surface has their own length. And in the quality criteria we have given, our minimum size is one, maximum size is five. I cannot specify only one of them. Because my mesh, I need to go with average of them. That I can specify in mesh parameters, we call them. So before we do meshing, we need to specify quality parameters and mesh parameters. So average I'll be taking as three, which is an average of one and five. The rest of the things, minimum length, I'm also fixing that. Once that is finalized, you can just accept them. I'll be going with three for length. So when I'm meshing it, it will be between my minimum and maximum sizes. So everything will be adjusted. Number of points on the lines will be adjusted automatically. Similarly for macros, we need to do the same. Select OK. So everything will be fixed now. But sometimes you can you can figure it out. I have a elemental criteria. Like the maximum size is three, five, and my minimum size is one. But we can see some of the lines are very close to each other. When we mesh any one of these areas, the element will be failure. You can see it's, it has a color. If the mesh is good, it won't have any other color. It will have a very good color, but there are elements failing here. And instead of fixing them manually, there is one more option to adjust them automatically. That is what we call reconstruct option in shell mesh. Reconstruct. Now I cannot select each and every element individually. That's gonna take a lot of time. So in the scoping option, we have an option called macro area. So as I said, macro is something which is defined with the boundaries. Selecting them and confirming and confirming twice actually. So they'll be automatically adjusted. But we need to understand due to this, what I have done, these elements are not exactly within the scope of my boundary. They are going out of that. That should not happen. To ensure that that won't happen when we are going with reconstruct, here there is an option. When we select them and we need to select the edges or better nodes we can select. Once we uh, specify them, they can work it out. But these kind of areas where this line, either of these two lines will be representing this feature. Here, this is the what we call features, similarly in CAD also. Either one of these lines will be necessary, uh, will be enough for me to work on my mesh. So I don't need both of the two lines. I can just suppress one of them. You can use cut option or join option here to suppress one of the lines. So that when I'm meshing, my mesh won't be failing in this specific regions. But there are some areas like here, let's say. 
even though let's say if i'm meshing here and this area i'm failing at i cannot do anything to these lines or better i'll better show it in a different model let's say of uh, this area where these lines are what we call feature lines without these line this feature is not confirmed at all so i cannot manipulate these feature lines i can only work on the lines which are on a plane area which they are not i know changing the surface too much i can just work on the any area and the basic very easy way to work is to divide my plane areas into rectangles and squares so that my mesh will be very good Let, this area is more of a quadrilateral and i'll try meshing it and to check it out how my mesh will be and for an example for this simulation is concerned this is how a neutral mesh will be a mesh without any quality criteria will errors will be a neutral gray color and this meshing which i am doing is mainly for crash analysis as we have discussed in presentation for crash analysis the mesh will be using is mix of quartz and trias and the one thing in crash analysis will be working is on the flow where we can see Uh, the triangles are following this direction but at this position we can see something called rotational chords or pattern trias where we can see trias forming from all our uh, three sides this should not be there because the energy flow or the force which is following through these nodes at this point they cannot we cannot be sure which direction they'll flow so i need to work on them you can use the reconstruct option to re remesh this entire area so that my mesh will be good now compared to before you can see the mesh is very good at this area the flow is also working as good one but we need to work on this specific areas and we can do local reconstruction we call it instead of selecting the entire macro i can select this specific lines once you select the specific lines you can mesh the specific area itself so that my mesh will be much more better this is how we need to do it manual meshing meshing by macro by macro we need to work on the meshing areas and uh, there might be some more areas let's see they have uh, trias let's say for example this area i'm meshing it but let's say i have trias i need to remove this trias or I, let's say these are the opposite trias i need to make sure they can form a single quadrilateral to do that i have options called split swap and join here so we can use swap option to bring this triad nearer to that so this is what we define a, as a mesh flow in the sense every trias should be following in same direction so that my when my energy comes in one direction the flow will be smooth and my results will be good so we need to reduce the number of trias we have and we can use split option to split this edge so that these trias will be combined select the edge confirm it and we can use join to join this options but you can see in the colors these are the failing failing elements to work on these elements instead of rebuild we have one more option called smoothing smoothing out once you select a specific area for smoothing or when whenever you select for smoothing make sure we are selecting a proper rectangle so that we are our meshing or smoothing will be good
once you confirm the smoothing automatically the areas will be adjusted so that your mesh will be good this is how we work on the trias triangles similarly we need to work on all the areas of meshing without failing for any quality criteria and i'll be demonstrating the uh, the meshing for this entire component as i'll be using the best mesh itself and since this component is of everything is divided into proper quadrilaterals my mesh will be almost good i just need to mesh them reconstruct by macro select the areas and automatically the flow will be taken into consideration by reconstruct only if reconstruction doesn't work we go with the other areas to work on the flows and we can see here there is an element quality failing here even though i'm reusing reconstruct this is not working mainly you can see it's due to the aspect ratio and you can click on them to disable this quality criteria and enable them because some of the elements are failing for multiple different quality criteria and we can see number of off elements we can identify these are the failed elements these are the number of trias we have these are number of quads i have thereby knowing how much of a mesh we have completed this failure is due to this hot point we cannot delete this hot point because these are on these are specifying this line so i can just connect this line and these are on on a same plane so one of these lines will be enough for me to represent this feature when you do some sometimes it will just erase the option if you don't want to erase any of them when you are joining them there is an option here for reconstruct remesh keep i'll be using keep option so that my mesh won't be erased once that is done you can use smooth option and select specific areas and my mesh will be good this is how all the areas we need to work on i'll be going faster now and in mesh one of the important other important parts is your time time constraint and one more thing when we are using ansa here we can see the flow should be very proper so that we need to check the flow if remesh is working properly or not and sometimes this is the pattern tray where three sides the tray will be same this should not be there so if i need to work on the flow here manual it will be difficult instead of that i have much more better option divide the into tries and since quadrilaterals properly so my mesh will be good and here the at the bottom we can use this options completely and you divide the entire thing into proper rectangles and squares your mesh flow will be very good then you can use the reconstruct option select them and remesh now we can see the mesh is good area better than before i can remove these lines but make sure this is keep why i'm removing these lines is because these lines are the ones which i made i made them then i can use smooth option to select this smooth it out when i do some of the things you can see i have a opposite trias so locally you need to work on this mesh and uh, since we are coming nearer to the end of our boot camp the software demo i have two more things to work on that is along in the pre processing this is only the first half we do till meshing after meshing we have certain other things to worry work on as i said the boundary conditions the loads along with assignment of materials and thickness 
in answer one of the difference between answer and hyper mesh is that here my mesh and my geometry are closely linked to each other and solver in the sense for solving we only need the mesh we don't need any geometry here so to make sure that happens i need to do something called release mesh select the mesh or the elements which i have done and confirm it so that the mesh will be released from my geometry uh, the reason is because you can see here at the bottom geometry and fe is there if i switch on any of the, any of them fe or geometry they are not they are not separated so we, i cannot differentiate between them so if i release the mesh select them release it once i release it effect switch on the geometry only the mesh will be available for me i'll be using only this mesh i created only partial part of this now i have a thickness also so this is only of sheet metal in sense only one thickness so if i need to work, see the thickness i just need to go here type shell as solid if i switch on them it will be assigned the thickness and i if i just need to switch on my parent geometry now we can see if i once i apply the thickness this part is almost same as my parent geometry this is what we do in meshing the first part of the meshing once we assign the thickness along with that we we can assign the materials using this option materials with regarding ings modulus the poisson ratio density these are the three major parameters we'll be using them we can define them along with that as i said uh, this is what we do in meshing along with the boundary conditions we, we can change into ls zina uh, module where i can define my constraints boundaries loads let's say i can specify the loads so that it is working on these number of nodes if let's say i here i have a body and load is being applied selection middle click and we have uh, we can define the loads i think that's it uh, finally we have a small area i i'll wait to show it to you where i have this pin we don't define this pin instead of defining that we take a mid surface these are the manually manual offset before i do manual offset i need to ensure this value is as per i need to know the thickness i need to know the thickness this thickness is 5 here also thickness is 5 i just need to use this offset option select the area and specify 2.5 as my mid, mid surface thickness and mid surface created similarly here once that, that is done i'll be hiding my all the others so if i want to here when i do manual mid surfacing my mid surface and parent geometry has same property id so i cannot differentiate between them to work on them you can work with pid region it will just hide the parent geometry now we have a mid surface for this areas and i'll be hiding this instead of representing this like in mesh we do something different first we mesh this areas
I have a thickness. I will be removing the thickness. Then uh, reconstruction option. Once reconstruction is done, instead of representing that pin, we'll be using something called connectors. That will be in LS Dyna or here we, we, it will be. We can use the beam element from here or even in classic mesh, we can create something called connectors from here or we have In LS Dyna, we can go with that idea. Here we will be connecting them something using RB2 elements or rigid body elements, we call them. Or you can use beam elements to connect them. You can you just need to select the nodes here. Either you can select them individually, like how I'm doing it. So RB8 elements will be somewhere here. I'll be using NAS strand so that it will be easier for me. Easier for me to show it to you. Here's something called RB2 elements. I just need to select the nodes here. I can do it individually. Once you select them, I just need to confirm it. So RB2 elements will be connected. This is how the connections will be considered. And similarly, I need to connect here also. Either manually working on it or you can use this loop option where all the elements in a loop, it's all, all automatically taken into the account. These are scoping option as I specified before. And you need to connect between this one and this one. You can select both of them. They'll be connected using the RB2 element. And this is how the center hinge point will be considered instead of using a 3d 3d uh, machine we'll do something similar to, to this one now we can see instead of treating like this i have created an rb2 elements this is how we do with connections I think that is that's it for the software demo. If you have any questions, you can just uh, ask me. I'll be uh, going with that Q and day. After that, I'll be showing the courses which are available in skilling and then a feedback form will be pasted in posted in the chat box. Once that is done, we'll be winding up for today's bootcamp. The feedback form will be used to generate certificates and mailing, sending it to your emails. So for Q and day, we'll start now. Prakash, uh, so like how can import the CAD model? As I said, we'll be using directly from here and open. And from here, we can directly import the CAD models of IGS step. Any of the CAD softwares we'll be using. CATIA, SOLIDWORKS, CREO, AutoCAD, Inventor. Yes, we can, uh, yes, Prakash, we can use D feature option, but there is a difference between sheet metal and a plastic. In sheet metal, we cannot use D feature. We cannot D feature any of the parts. We can only use D feature in plastic components. No, if thickness is varying, they are not called sheet metal, they are called plastic but we'll be following the same procedure. Yes, kind of like a trimming process. Mid surface, I'll, bet, I'll show it to you.
So here we have a thickness. I'm zooming in. I'm assigning the thickness now. So you can see the thickness. If I'm assigning the thickness, it will be treated as similar to my parent geometry. I hope this is clear, Chandan. Yeah, feedback link I'll be pasting in now in uh, the same group, same chat box. No, quality criteria will not be predefined. They'll be varying from company to company and component to component. So we'll, we need to manually provide them. Yes, Rinasana, I'll be giving in the feedback link here. Guys, I have shared the feedback link. You can use the feedback link so that you can uh, give your email address. Guys, recorded version, the, I think this will be post posted in the skill link website. You can check it out. Yeah, Kaushik release part, you can directly use the options from classic mesh. Release option, you just need to select the elements to release. Okay, Chandan, uh, solver and post processing softwares are almost, uh, will be using for every solver, there's a post processing software attached to them. Like for ANSYS, it's the same thing. We'll be using mechanical modular for structural analysis. So they'll be combined, what, what are they called? And we have LS Dyna, where LS pre-post is will be using for post-processing. LS Dyna is a solver. So they will be changing from different uh, companies. So pin is slightly inclined. So in the mesh itself, I don't need to specifically incline that myself. So if I want to work on them specifically, you can just create the nodes in between to work on them. So Himant, uh, you can uh, try watching the video once they are being posted in the skill link. Solvers and post-processing software Chandan as I specified. Uh, some of the examples will be for Solver, ANSYS, Abacus, Nastron, and post-processing software, some of them will be attached to the solvers itself. Yeah, load analysis, either we can apply in the pre-processing software, like go here, going here. You can specify the solver here directly. And you can add them from anywhere here. I will be going too much into the uh, boundary conditions. They can either be set here or in the solver also. The accuracy will depend not on the solver, Ashwant. It depends more on the meshing and the other parameters will be setting there along with the materials properties. Yeah, we can, uh, Hari, yeah, we can use them in the national software also. Here also we can do it. We can also do in the solvers. They'll, the options will be provided there. Yeah, Jay Kishan. The mainly the reason for using mid surface is the number of nodes here. Like this is a sheet metal. So you can see in this small area, we have four nodes. So if I create a volume mesh, if I create a volume mesh for uh, let's say a specific area, I, I, I'll be using not as a quad element, but as a hexa element where I'll be having eight nodes instead of four nodes. So I'll be using 2D surface so that I can reduce my computation time. Uh, Dinesh, Akash, you can provide them in the 
feedback form itself, your emails. I'll be pasting once again. So guys, I have already pasted once again the feedback link in the chat box. You can use that. Yeah, as I said, we can uh, assemble everything here itself using the connectors. Using the connectors like weld options, bolt options will be connecting them. Guys, I have pasted in the chat box. I hope everyone can see that. Sorry guys, I'll be, I'm using a different one. Sorry guys, I'll be pasting once again. Yeah, I got the good one. Yeah, paste. Sorry guys, use the link which I have just messaged in the chat box. Use the link which is generated right now. Akash, you can unmute and speak your question. Akash? Yes, sir. Yeah, your question. So, uh, please explain the mid surface feature one more time. How to create a mid surface, or what is the use of mid surface? No, no. How to use a mid surface? Use, I didn't get that point specifically. Create. How to create? Okay. Let's say I'm taking uh, this surface. So I, I have this CAD model, right? I have this CAD model. So mm -hmm. before that, I need to work on whether this is a mid surface or a, CAD, or a plastic surface. For that, I need to measure the thickness at different, different areas, like how I measured here. Here, all the areas, it's 0 0.75. Once I know the thickness, I can specify whether this is sheet metal or a plastic. Once that is done, I have manual way of mid surfacing or automatic way of mid surfacing them. So automatic way, you can use the skin option here. Once you go with skin option, select the entire geometry, middle click, or confirmation basically. So that we'll get three different colors, red, blue, and green. Mm -hmm. So that we can differentiate between one, uh, in the sense, top surface and a bottom surface. Once that is done, confirm it. Select the side from which you want to create an offset or mid surface. And everything will be given. The mid surface automatic thickness will be taken into consideration. Once you select, confirm it, your mid surface will be generated. Yes, sir. I hope this is clear. Yes, sir. It's, it's clear. Any more questions, Akash? No, sir. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot. Uh, answer software. You need to get it from the third, you know, from online itself. You can just search it out. Now, when you take the course, one of the engineers will be guiding you to work on, will be providing the, so will be telling you where we can work with the software. I think that's it. No more questions. I'll just take you through what are the options which are available in skilling basically. So uh, we are one of the leading edtech platforms that are dedicated to engineering education. So we are always building with regarding the fresh graduates to the industrial project using the industrial project. We are powered by, you know, Combinator, Iron Pillar, NASCOM, and we are certified by National Skill Development Corporation. 
So the certificates which you which you get after completing the courses will be valid for all the in even in universities. This is how your certificate will be generated. And we have uh, some 150 plus courses in separate all the domains like mechanical, electrical, civil, computer science, medical field, all of them. And you can explore them from your from our skilling website directly. Guys, you'll be getting the certificates as soon as possible within a week or a month, but you'll be receiving an email regarding that point. Guys, for answer software, you just need to uh, try with online. You'll get uh, how to work on them. And uh, we have all the courses from mechanical, electrical, computer science, electronics, biomedical, even some of the offline programs are available. And one of the PG programs is postgraduate program in CAE. There we have uh, courses are some of the courses that will be ANSA course, which will be using the ANSA software. Second will be HyperMesh. Then we have LS Dyna, which is a solver course and a post processing course. Basics of FEA, the theoretical aspect of FEA, how the FEA is developed. What is the mathematics behind FEA? And a crash course so that you'll be working for the job part. So placement opportunities will be provided to you for those who take the PG courses. And as I said, uh, we have thousand place students will be is there and companies. So generally we'll for every month we'll be going with the number of placements and for the average salary between 3.28.25. And these are uh, some of the companies which are partnership with us, like, you know, the, like Saint, Citadel, Tata Alexi, Explio, Safran, CADFEM, Alten. And we have uh, softwares, we'll be using some of the softwares in CAE basically, ANSYS, and this workbench, which in much more detailed manner, along with the meshing. Guys, I hope this point is clear. What is the difference between ANSYS and ANSA? How differentiate it, it is between meshing part when you compare with ANSYS and ANSA? The main difference will be where where in ANSA we we can directly control the mesh flow, how the flow, uh, what type of mesh we need, how the mesh should accurately check it out. And with HyperMesh and uh, LSDN answer, these are the job roles. Once you complete the courses, these are the job roles will be elig eligible for. CA or FE engineer, crash analysis, crash analyst, durability engineer. And this is how the career path uh, for uh, CA is something like this. And the salary will be starting salary will be ranging from 2.5 to 5 lakh. And once you have more and more experience, the salary will be increased continuously. And the testimonials for some of the students who have been placed can check it from our skilling website. Okay, guys, you can check out this uh, testimonials if you're interested. So these are the areas where we can help you with regarding the job, career services concerned, portfolio building, where we'll be, uh, you'll be working on some of the project, we'll be uh, showcasing this project in our website directly. 
and will be helping with your resume and LinkedIn profiling. And some of this thing will be in companies, so your interviews and testing for aptitude and communication. This all will be coached along with mock tool test. So when I'm going with the meshing softwares where uh, companies like say and RLIC, when they are taking the students, they'll be conducting something called tool test. As I said, a time is a main constraint where we need to do all the things which I have shown in the demo, like taking a so geometry, identifying sheet metal or a plastic, topology cleanup, mid surfacing, meshing, completing the quality criteria. Everything should be done within the given time and they will be evaluating on this part. And then we will be providing the mock interviews for that and the industrial job opportunities. And since interviews, so these are our key partners. So they are uh, combined with us and so the students who are graduating from the courses will be taking the placement from CN and uh, Renault Nizan, some of the partners. And we have tie-ups with MathWorks for the softwares, mainly Dissolve Systems and Resolve Nissan for the training regarding the software is concerned. Our instructors will be from some of these companies directly. The courses will be made by them. So these are the people who are of uh, working with the courses in Skilling. Uh, we have for electrical vehicle, EV, embedded systems, civil, data science. So this is the basic understanding regarding our uh, skilling is concerned. So I hope everyone has uh, filled the feedback forms. So you can just go through all these things from our skilling website. So it will be much more clear to you. Guys, for CAD student, the basic package will be around 3.5 for the fresh for the freshers who don't have any experience. That can vary depending on their experience uh, is ba basis. Yes, uh, thank you for informing Shanmugan. So as I said, the meshing part where So this is one of the hypermesh solvers which I'll be showing showcasing. So this hypermesh is a combination of preprocessor. It has its own solver and it has its own post processing also. Okay guys, I am sending the feedback form again. If those who have not filled it, please fill it now. So till now I have shown what is the meshing where we are be using the meshing, but I'll be showing a video case where we'll be using the solver to get the result. So this is one of the examples for side pole crash analysis. Yeah, will, you guys will be getting the your certificates through your email. So this is an example of side pole crash where the part which I've just shown it to you side side door will be used here. So we have a car model. And we'll be using, these are the completely meshed model. The side door, which I'm just showing to you, it's a meshed one, where we'll be using this, uh, this elements or 1D connectors to connect all the components, all the assembly part. These are the mesh components and this is in the simulation concern. We do the simulation, we get all the contours, So all these courses will be combined in a package for PG, PG courses concerned. So here we'll be measuring all the stress contours, stress strain contours, every part of that. So we'll be finding the stress values and concentration so that we can modify in reality. This is not only for automotive, all the other forms is 
taken into consideration here. And yeah, I'll just take you through a simple example regarding the one of the courses answer. So here will be similarly will be introduced to answer GUI and all the tools will be working on. And here will be understanding about basics of FEA, similarly topology cleanups, but in very detailed manner, you'll be working on some of the projects with regarding meshing. And uh, if, whenever you face any doubts, there will be training regarding that in one-on-one -on -one basis, we'll be having a sessions and play uh, sessions will be there. That will be in uh, throughout the week basis, support will be provided to you. Whenever you face any doubts, anything regarding FEA or the course related, people will be there to uh, help you regarding that point. Along with that, we'll be studying on solid meshing also. And al along with plastic uh, meshing, plastic components, working on plastic components, solid meshing, and the connections, how to use the connections, what about different connections are there, like weld connections, bolt connections, seam weld, spot weld, majority of them. Then we have something called batch meshing or casting. These are automatic meshing for plastic components where thickness is varying throughout the components. It's very difficult to sometimes it's a time taking a uh, process for manually working on them. And then we have using the morphing basics, how to use morphing, what are the techniques we'll be using there. And similarly, we have something in LS Dyna also where we'll be learning how to work with solvers <clears throat> or the differences will be there, will be shown in here. So if you want to try it out, you can try downloading the software, get any CAD models, try working on them. For more, more detail, there are some free courses regarding FEA. You can check it out. For any more further details, if you want to enroll in skilling regarding any of the PG courses, you can just will be uh, if you you can just mail it to us mail to us at skilling at support. That will be uh, helpful. Any more questions, guys? Yeah, Akash, uh, you can unmute and speak yourself. Sir, I've taken the uh, course uh, called uh, Post Graduation Program in Hybrid Electric Vehicle Design and Analysis. Yes. So, uh, uh, in uh, in which uh, they say they provide uh, they uh, provide uh, materials on CATIA V5. Yes. Hypermesh Solid Works. See uh, um, that point. That point you said right. Hybrid electrical vehicle. Huh. That course is combination of four different areas. It has a design, it has CAE or FEA, it has CFD, it has an electrical part of that. So each and every track you can complete one by one, one by one, depending on your uh, interest, basically. And when you're with the design, they'll be providing the models for the courses will be learning with the CATIA. NXCAD. Akash? Yes, sir. Uh, is this clarified? Huh? Uh, yes, sir. It is clear. So, uh, sir, one more question. Sure. Oh, so, uh, uh, when I complete my course, okay, what uh, say you become a tier one designer or a motor vehicle, a motor designer or a EV designer. Okay. So I want to know what are the, what are the chances to become a, uh, um, by which I generate more value in which uh, designing no, every see, Every sector has, has their own uh, plus uh, positives actually their differences will be there. Like design, people when design, they do design part. And they, they see any industry, 
there is nothing specific like this is the best part this is this is the highest area this is the lowest area if we let's take the ev vehicle or electrical vehicle per se the people they need are from the design they need to design the vehicle before we do anything and there are the machine engineers they mesh the component and there are the cae engineers they analyze the components mm -hmm. and there are manufacturing industries manufacturing engineers they work, they are responsible for manufacturing they are testing engineers so everyone is needed in an industry so it has its own value we cannot specifically specify on whose value is the highest okay sir this clear i thought i suppose yes sir it's clear so i'll just be here for some 10 more minutes if you have any more questions you can just raise your hand you can or you can post it in the chat box Oh, so okay, guys. So course fee details for uh, PG and those things you can just drop an email, or better, since you have provided feedback, we'll be taking from there. One of my uh, engineers will be contacting you. You can just ask all the details regarding the course, uh, the options available for the uh, fees and everything. They'll be explaining in much more detail. And they'll be giving an email regarding those uh, points. Kaushik, are you specifically asking regarding the boot camps or regarding the course? If it is regarding the course, practice uh, examples will be there along with the challenges. I can show you one of my points will be here. Yes. Similarly, you'll be having this kind, this kind of once you get into one of the courses, you'll have this kind of link where you just need to log in. Let's say for a hypermesh course or for answer, we have challenges. We have practices, we can just uh, take them and they'll be guiding you through how it should be done, what is the best way we can do. The technical support engineers will be guiding you regarding these points. Once you complete certain courses and you have the proficiency in them, it'll be shifted to the career services track where the engineers will be helping you on the training part for the placements is concerned. Kaushik, is that answers you, is that answer your question? Yes, yes. Whatever we have gone through, that needs to be practiced on the software. So it depends on your area of interest. 
like if you are more uh, interested in design you should go with that because these uh, along with uh, we need more passion regarding these things so basically when it comes to ca the machining has more opportunities even the placements are still going on so it's based on your area of interest basically if, because every industry needs a design and uh, analysis people so if you think you are good at design and if you think you can uh, understand design more can work on design more you can go with the design area similarly if you are good with uh, analysis if you want to work in analysis field if you like doing that you can come to ca uh, yes if you have uh, experience in cad it depends on whether if you are going for cad your experience matters there and similarly your packages in when you are uh, going for placement that will be helpful but when if you go for ca it will be different case where you will be treated as in fresher complete is that answer your question kaushik yes Yeah, Tosif, do you have anything to ask? Yes, yes. Like, uh, what is the uh, average salary pack to one expected from us? Uh, can you repeat it once again? Your your audio is breaking. Yes, yes, yes. After pursuing this course, what is the average? What is the salary pack uh, from this? Uh, got uh, uh, into sorry, 